Hello and welcome to F1 Livery Histories, the channel where we take a look back at the different paint jobs, racing trims and sponsor decals adopted by respective Formula 1 teams throughout the eras. Today we'll be taking a look at one of France's most enduring Formula 1 constructors, a team which encountered numerous peaks throughout its distinguished Formula 1 lifespan, creating a reputation for tireless determination, ambition and patriotism. Equip Ligier Automobile Ligier was founded in 1968 by former racing driver Guy Ligier and manufactured their prototype coupe in 1968, the Ligier JS1, named in memory of Guy Ligier's personal friend and business accomplice, Joe Schlesser. Ligier would go on to compete in various sports car and endurance racing categories, enjoying sponsorship from the French state-owned tobacco brand Jetan, as seen here on the Ligier JS2. In 1976, Ligier acquired the assets of the defunct Matra Sports Operation, an event which gave rise to the formation of Equip Ligier, a new Formula 1 constructor set to enter the sport in season 1976, operating out of Ligier's hometown of Vichy. So begins our retrospective on the racing liveries of the illustrious Equip Ligier. Being the sole French team in Formula 1 at the time of its debut, it was only right that the Ligier JS5 came painted in Les Bleus. Over the course of 21 seasons, the presence of the French national racing colour would remain a feature of Ligier team liveries, much like the team's loyal sponsor, Jetan, which was seen in earnest upon Ligier's first Formula 1 chassis. The JS5 was designed by Gérard Ducourage and Michel Bujon, and came outfitted with a Matra V12 engine. Shell and Goodyear were signed on as technical partners, as the team competed as a single car entrant during its debut season. The JS5 was notable for its large teapot-shaped airbox, which made expert use of Jetan branding in the form of its trademark Gypsy Dancer. However, a change in regulations would see Ligier adopt a more traditional design midway into the season. Ligier's chiefly blue livery also featured cadences of white and red and remained mostly unchanged throughout the team's formative seasons. In 1977, the team raced with the JS7 model, again outfitted with Matra V12 power, featuring additional sponsorship from French toymaker Norev. Jacques Lafitte would earn the team its first Grand Prix win by triumphing at Anderstorp for the Swedish Grand Prix. This historic win would prove to be the first all-French victory in World Championship history, with driver, team and engine all being of French origin. The updated JS7-9 was used in the first few races of 1978, before the team introduced the JS9, first seen at Monaco. German adhesives company Loctite signed on with the team, brokering a deal which saw the company name appearing on the car's front wing. 1979 saw Ligier experimenting with Grand Effect technology, building the highly successful JS11 chassis, which now ran with Ford DFB power and ELF fuels. This was the season the team expanded to a two-car operation, as Patrick de Pilier and Jackie Ix both partnered Lafitte throughout the season. In 1980, Ligier would experience its most successful Formula 1 season thanks to the revised JS1115 chassis. Didier Peroni, along with Ligier regular Jacques Lafitte, would steer the French privateers to second position in the constructors' standings. Jetan was now seen on the car in an italicised font, which made use of drop shadows. The following season, Ligier would return to using Matra engines for the now Michelin shod JS17. The Ligier cars of 1981 now came with Talbot branding as the small French automobile marquee's logos graced the car's side pods, monocoque and rear wing. The introduction of Talbot would also see the addition of a secondary shade of deep blue, Talbot's company colour, which accompanied Jetanz's established shade. In 1982, Ligier would compete with both the JS17B and JS19 chassis, running with an updated Talbot Jetan livery, which saw each of the team's colours reaching across the car horizontally, meeting in a V at the front of the car. The car's Matra engines came rebadged as Talbot power units, as the team began a testing program with Matra-built V6 turbocharged engines. However, the team's association with Talbot and Matra would come to an end following 1982, derailing the team's ambition of competing with turbo engines. Ligier would revert to running customer Ford DFB engines for 1983, as the JS21 came again painted primarily in a singular shade of blue. As ever, the livery sported Jetanz's iconic branding, and also included a French tricolour, which surrounded the monocoque. Additional sponsors Café do Brasil was seen on the car's engine case and nose cone. Post-1983 would mark Ligier's return to French-built engines. Thank you. 
Heading into 1984, the team organised a deal with Renault to race with factory Renault V6 turbo engines. The team also landed a major sponsorship deal emanating from the gambling industry, as the newly built JS23 chassis took on a red, white and blue livery, in deference to the French National Lottery. The team would compete officially as Ligier Lotto, garnering Europe Car, US Jeans and Antar as auxiliary sponsors. Following the 1984 season, Lotto would temporarily scale back its involvement with Ligier, as Italian domestic appliance manufacturer Candy stepped in to become the team's major sponsor in season 1985. This move resulted in Ligier returning to their classic blue livery for the JS25, as Pirelli was brought in as the team's tyre supplier. At races where tobacco advertising was banned, Jetan branding would appear in logo form only. New sponsors in the form of power equipment manufacturers Mace, along with computer distribution company Blanchet Lockertop, first appeared on the car. In 1986, Lotto returned to the livery, reprising their role as titular sponsors, as the team raced with the JS27. The team's relationship with Renault was set to expire following 1986, and so the team brokered a new deal with Alfa Romeo to power the newly commissioned JS29. However, this deal was ended prematurely before the commencement of the 1987 season, and so Ligier reverted to Megatron power units, rebadged BMW flat 4 engines, racing with both the JS29B and JS29C chassis. The 1987 livery featured a direct contrast between Lotto's dark blue, which engaged the upper part of the car, and the light blue of Jetan, seen as per usual on the side pods. In 1988, Ligier switched to Judd engines, Valvoline fuels and Goodyear tyres with the arrival of the JS31. Ligier would also revert to the use of a singular shade of blue for its livery, which now featured red and white piping surrounding the chassis. 1989 saw the team debut the Ford-powered JS33, which possessed a livery that carried an emphasis on simplicity. For season 1990, Jetan once again became the team's title sponsor. However, Lotto would continue to remain significantly involved with the team throughout the season, leading to an unchanged livery for the updated JS33B chassis. It was during 1990 that Equip Ligier moved its base of operations to new facilities at Magni Corps. 1991 saw the team competing with the JS39 chassis, which came outfitted with Lamborghini V12 power. For the first time, the team's livery featured black side pods, as Jatan chose to promote its blondes range. Longtime fuel suppliers Elf took on a larger identity in 1991, seen on both the car's engine case and nose cone. In 1992, the team re signed with Renault, entering the JS37. Jatan continued to promote blondes, now present on white side pods, whilst Lotto simultaneously promoted Lotto Sportif. Computer hardware brand Zenith also appeared on the car, appearing on the sides of the front wing. However, 1992 would mark the end of an era for Ligier, as the team's founder Guy Ligier sold control of the team to Cyril de Rouve, heralding the beginning of the next chapter in the team's history. For season 1993, the team re-emerged with a slightly revamped, yet largely familiar visual identity for the JS39. Yellow Pages joined the team as sponsors, whilst at the final two rounds of the season, Martin Brundle's car ran with a special edition Jetan livery to celebrate the launch of the French cigarette brand in Japan. The team retained an unchanged livery for season 1994, competing with the JS39B, the final car developed in association with longtime chief designer Gerard Ducourage. At the conclusion of the season, the Ligier team was once again sold, as Cyril de Rouve passed on control of the team to Flavio Briatore. Heading into 1995, Tom Wilkinshaw secured a 50% share in the team, as Ligier hit the track with the Frank Derny-designed, Muon Honda-powered JS41. Most notably, the JS41 competed in a deeper shade of blue than what was usually seen, whilst the livery made use of touches of red to the car's front wing and engine case, as kickers were signed aboard. 1995 would also see Astoria, Speedy, Foxy, Technotest and Harada acquiring space on the car. In 1996 the team entered the JS43, which competed with branding for yet another state-owned tobacco brand, Gulwa, now seen on the side pods and rear wing. The team livery also accommodated enhancements of yellow, thanks to the addition of Parmalat as major sponsors. EDS, Avisco, Giordana, Kibon and Powerhorse also signed on with the team. Olivier Parnas would secure the team its final victory at the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix. Season 1996 would prove to be the ultimate Grand Prix season for Equip Ligier, as heading into the 1997 season, Flavio Briatore sold the team to four-time world champion Alain Prost. 
the newly christened Prost Grand Prix would go on to compete with the JS45, the final Ligier chassis, during its debut season. With this deal came the conclusion of a long-standing relationship between Formula One and the little French underdog team, 